Welcome to Nutrusa Grasslands. I'm Dr. Matt Allender, and, and today we're here to do health assessments of the ornate box turtle. Nechusa Grasslands is a rich, diverse prairie ecosystem in, in north central Illinois that have some of the signature species of our state, which include both the bison and the ornate box turtle. I'm Elizabeth Bach. I am the ecosystem restoration scientist uh, with the Nature Conservancy here at Nechusa Grasslands. Nechusa Grasslands is a restored grassland preserve. It's about 4,000 acres. We're located in north central Illinois near the town of Dixon and Franklin Grove. The prairie is home to over 700 native plant species. We have over 200 birds that use the habitat either in migration, breeding, or wintering grounds. We have an abundance of insects and reptiles and amphibians as well. Nechusa grasslands represents a really rare ecosystem, the tall grass prairie. Less than one tenth of one percent of this ecosystem exists in Illinois, where it once covered the entire state. In fact, Illinois is known as the prairie state. Nechisa uh, includes some remnant habitat, but has largely been planted and restored through the efforts of staff, volunteers, and others here working with the Nature Conservancy and throughout the community. My role is really to work with researchers like Dr. Matt Allender with his work with the ornate box turtles. The ornate box turtle is a small 400 gram, 500 gram species of turtle that is entirely terrestrial and lives in the prairies. And over the last hundred years, the populations of ornate box turtles in Illinois have become decreasingly popular across the state, largely because prairie has disappeared. As we become more aware of the, the plight of the ornate box turtle, my job is to come in and look at the health and disease of box turtles and try to make sure that we're putting out the healthiest population of individuals that can then serve as the basis for the next generation of turtles. Today, what you're going to see is a collection of sampling where we're going to use detector dogs in order to find turtles along the landscape. Then we'll do a lot of environmental variables such as GPS location, habitat, temperature, humidity, these all associate with health in reptiles because reptiles are ectotherms. So their entire metabolism is based on the external environment. So these are incredibly important for the health. Then we'll do physical exams and we'll take blood and do swabs and look for pathogens and diseases that could cause conservation problems down the road or even immediately. And after that, we're going to take all these blood samples back to our lab. We, we set up a lab here in the field and we look under the microscope at the blood, we look at the swabs, we start to process things to look for kidney function, liver function, the same things that when you and I go to the doctor, um, we, we look to try to make these turtles as healthy as we possibly can. We've been doing health assessments in box turtles for 15 years. This is our 15th year. This is our sixth year at Nechusa, and we've caught hundreds of, of ornate box turtles now, and some of them multiple times. So we're being able to tell how their health is changing over time. So we've used dogs for this entire time, and, and dogs are a tremendous conservation tool because they find turtles much more efficiently than people. In fact, in our studies, dogs can find nine times as many turtles in the same amount of time than a human. And that gives us an opportunity to test for more diseases, look for more illnesses, and see lots of trends across the landscape and across time that we wouldn't ever get to do without the, the canine detector dogs, the, the Boykin Spaniels, that are true turtle dogs. This is one of my turtle dogs. Her name is Skeeter, and she found two of the six turtles we found this morning. Yeah, this is a Boykin Spaniel. It's the state dog of South Carolina. She is part of my fifth litter in this particular bloodline. I only keep the super dogs, the ones with endless drive, and the, the other ones that I give away for pets. They love what they do, and uh, they're gentle with the turtles. They bring them to hand. They trail turtles just like a beagle would trail a rabbit. They're enthusiastic. 
and we'll be doing this for four months this summer and by the end of the summer they will probably catch over 500 box turtles we don't ever keep any they're released right where they were caught within an hour or two it is an accurate thing to say that I'm the only person in the United States who does this it started as a hobby and then yeah, so more and more people became interested um, in, in turtles in the last 25 years and um, started getting requests to get turtles to put transmitters on so they could study their movements. And that's how this whole thing started and uh, been doing it almost 20 years. I have seven working dogs and I have uh, one dog with me that's a uh, little bit too old but I take her out sometimes and she adds uh, emotional support yeah. for us. <laughs> there, these are all her children and grandchildren. She still loves to hunt and these dogs are the best friends box turtles ever had. So CZS and Brookfield Zoo have a long history of conservation programs and improving the health of species across the globe and we're doing it here in our backyard. Things that are important to Illinois residents are important to CZS and this project integrates the world-class veterinary services that we provide at Brookfield Zoo with conservation action right here in our state. So one of the wonderful things about this project is that it's a true collaboration between CZS and the University of Illinois College of Veterinary Medicine and that it brings together veterinary services with our teaching program and our education program at Brookfield Zoo but also at the vet school. This program has developed within the vet school and now we're able to combine it with the expertise and the reach that, that Chicago Zoological Society has. Telling a sick and a healthy turtle apart is often really difficult. And so some of the things that we're doing with this project are trying to find ways to tell whether an animal is sick or healthy. Identifying these things on the physical exam, and the, and the physical exam is the most important part of a health assessment, but it's often very subtle or small changes that take experience and education in order to identify those. But that's what this project is able to do. When we see lots of turtles all in one day, we can compare those turtles a lot easier. And then we can see these trends across not only one population, but across many populations. And that's what one of the major benefits that this has had to the scientific community and the, the zoo community, in that we're able to assess and come up with strategies and protocols to assess health of turtles that lots of other veterinarians at zoos and in wildlife settings are utilizing across the country. So when we find these infections in wild turtles, it's an indication of what pathogens are on the landscape. And turtles aren't the only animals utilizing the natural resources. So box turtles really are those sentinels of environmental health because it, it tells us what's going on in the environment sometimes before we see it in people or in other animals. Box turtles are long-lived species. Monitoring these diseases over the next 20 to 30 years is critical for understanding how these animals and multiple generations of these animals handle the environment. Sometimes it takes a long time to get the best information and for box turtles, it's gonna take a while.